So now we have gone through mass, weight, density. Now we can introduce pressure. And density and pressure go hand in hand because they're both related to mass and they are both calculations. They use mass differently in their calculations. So when you think of density, you think of buoyancy and floating and less mass per volume. When you think of pressure, you have to do two calculations for pressure. Pressure is hand in hand using mass for force and for pressing down and pushing down. So let's talk about that a little bit. When you calculate air pressure, you're doing one calculation in the numerator and then you're doing another calculation of division. Let's look at the calculation in the numerator first. The numerator is a calculation of force. The numerator calculates mass times the gravity constant over area. So we talked a little bit about this when we were talking about the pressure on your head. Let's look into it a little bit more. When we review volume versus area, just as a review for you, volume is the container, the 3D space that an object occupies. An object can be a gas, an object can be a liquid, it can be a solid. It's the 3D space is volume, but area is a 2D space of length times width that a surface occupies, like ground. Okay, so there's the difference between density as a volume calculation and pressure as an area calculation. Both of those, density and pressure, use mass in the numerator. The denominator, it differs by volume or area. Pressure is the calculation of weight over an area. That's why we think of it as the ton on the one by one foot space on top of our head. What you can remember is that as altitude increases, density decreases. As altitude increases, pressure decreases because they both have mass in the numerator. And mass in the numerator goes hand in hand with what's on the other side of the equation. Density is on the other side of the equation here, and pressure is on the other side of the equation here. So remember, as altitude increases, density decreases. As altitude increases, pressure decreases. Now, what this is showing you is altitude on the y-axis, and it is showing you, um, it's a strange little map, uh, a strange graph, but it works for you because of the altitude. What this is showing you is zero and an increasing quantity of pressure and density. You see there are no numbers down here because this is just increasing amounts of pressure and density. I didn't say this is a great graph, but it works. And what you're seeing is that where you start on the ground level at an altitude near zero, and you go up in altitude, that means that density decreases along the orange line because this is the highest density and this is lower density here along the y-axis. And if you start with um, air pressure at sea level, that is at its highest level. And as you increase in altitude, the air pressure decreases because this is a decreased number on the x-axis. So this is an important graph. I'm not saying it's a really scientific graph because it's not a scientific graph. It's really just a visual representation of what's happening, but it's an important graph. And the number one thing to remember is altitude increases, density and pressure decrease because mass is in the numerator for both of them. Now, what I want to introduce to you 
is that this column of air for air pressure is a column of air that sits on top of a surface that has a surface area. So we can calculate air pressure for this surface area. And if we fix this surface area at one inch by one inch, you know, basically the size of this, maybe size of this area, from sea level at New York City all the way up to the top of the atmosphere, then we can take the weight of the air in that column and divide it by that fixed area of one inch by one inch. And we will actually get a weight that says that 14.7 pounds on average, 14.7 pounds of air pushes on that one inch space. So if you've got one foot by one foot on top of your head and a ton of air, think of this as putting your nose up and you've got 15 pounds of air sitting on your nose. Okay, um, and this comes into play because this measure of one inch to one inch being 14.7 pounds per square inch moves into metric in a different measure of millibars of one one thousandth of a bar millibars and you've got one thousand millibars so you've got one bar one bar equals 1,000 millibars. We generally work with the 1,000 millibars when we talk about pressure in meteorology, but let me explain that a little bit more to you. We talked about that column of atmospheric pressure equaling 14.7 pounds per square inch, or in metric, which I like much better, 1,000 millibars which 1,000 millibars equals one bar. And to further complicate things, English says that 14.7 pounds per square inch equals 30 inches of mercury pushed up in a tube, which seems crazy. And <laughs> I don't really like the English system. So I like to work in metric, we'll be working in metric for this course, we'll be saying 1,000 millibars. And in fact, if you're up in Denver, that would equal 850 millibars at that higher altitude, less pressure. And we would be relating that to one atmosphere of pressure pushing down on you. We call it one atmosphere in that one inch by one inch space. Um, I'm not saying this is easy to understand, but you can get this and stick with the metric and you'll be fine. Now, why did we come up the word bar? Okay, this is another English thing, okay? But this air column of one inch by one inch from sea level all the way up to the top of the atmosphere, about 160,000 feet at 14.7 pounds in this column is the same as taking a steel column, a steel bar, that is one inch by one inch, and having 52 inches of that, about four feet, four inches, 52 inches of a steel bar, weighs the same 14.7 pounds. So this steel bar that's one inch by one inch and 52 inches high, weighs 14.7 pounds. And because it's a bar, they called everything a barometer, and they talk about millibars. So uh, that's how you get the bar in barometer. And it's related to something real, even though something real is pretty strange. Key point to take home, key point that you must remember, atmospheric pressure at any level in the atmosphere, sea level, Denver level, Mount Everest level, depends on the weight of the air overhead an area. Think of the weight of the air in that one foot by one foot space on top of your head. This is sea level, one ton of air. At Mount Everest, this would roughly be 
1,000 pounds of air or half of this um, weight and pressure because at Mount Everest, 50% of the pressure is above you related to what the pressure is at sea level. Okay, Atmospheric pressure at any level depends on the weight of the air overhead pressing down pressure. Now, you can think of it this way. You can think of it as pancake pressure. If you think of it that way, you'll think that pancake pressure is lower at the top of the stack because there's not so many pancakes pressing down at the top of the stack. But at the bottom of the stack, the pancake pressure is much higher because you have a lot more pancakes pressing down on this area. So you can think of it in terms of pancake pressure. As altitude increases, pressure above decreases. Please stop the video in and think about that. It is critical to understand that. You'll need it for the quiz. Now you can understand this graphic from Arizona State University. They do great meteorological work. You want to continue your studies there? I highly recommend them. This graphic shows you that as altitude increases, air pressure decreases. And at sea level, you are noticing that the pressure there is 1,000 millibars at sea level. In this graphic out of Arizona, they go up to Tucson. And Tucson is at about 3,000 feet. And at about 3,000 feet, there is less air pressing on you from above. Uh, from above. And that pressure is at about 900 millibars. Now, if you go up to Mount Lemmon in Arizona, Mount Lemmon is about 9,000 feet. You've got even less mass pressing on you at that point. And the pressure at Mount Lemmon is at about 700 millibars. So you can start to understand that as altitude increases, Pressure decreases because there's less weight pressing on top of you. When you get to jet levels of 30,000 feet, 42,000 feet, there's very little air pressing on top of you. This becomes very important for your health in a plane at that level over time. We'll talk about that on another video. Just to review, air pressure is force over area. Force is mass times gravitational acceleration or gravitational pull over area. A one inch by one inch column from sea level up to the top of the atmosphere weighs about 14.7 pounds and is known in metric as 1,000 millibars. Let's put all of this together for you. When you look at an aneroid barometer, it is measuring air pressure on the basis of air density. What does air density, air pressure, and humidity all have to do with forecasting weather on an aneroid barometer? Well, we know that falling pressure brings stormy weather. This aneroid barometer looks at pressure as here's your 30 inches of mercury with fair weather at sea level. Here's 29 inches of mercury, 28 inches of mercury, reduced pressure at stormy levels. Stormy weather is associated with wet weather and wet air is associated with humid air and humid air is less dense than dry air. We know all this. Let's put it all together in this final slide. If we've got less dense air, that's associated with less air pressure because of mass in the numerator of both calculations. So if humid air has less mass and less density and less weight, it has less pressure than dry air, then you will see on here less pressure associated with humid air. Humid air can condense to rain so that humid air is related to falling pressure is related to stormy weather on a barometer. See you on the next video.